webinar and this will be available on but for both the curious piano teachers and abrsm will both be making the replay available on our social media sites around and about now for those of you that haven't heard of the curious piano teachers before well guess what we're curious we're actually an online membership uh, organization that helps piano teachers around the world and we have lots of members across the world to learn as much as they teach and I know we'll have lots of members on our webinar today and if you're feeling curious really about finding out more then I know we've got a Shannon's going to be telling you about a coupon code that we have specially for you and um, over to you again Sharon. Thank you. So today we are absolutely delighted to be welcoming Mervyn Cousins, who is the Deputy Chief Examiner of ABRSM, and Ali Bowen Davies, who is the Deputy Head of Learning and Qualifications, onto this live call. Hello to you both and a welcome. Oh, I think, Ali, we yeah, have... I'm okay now. That's, that's one of the things of modern technology, isn't it? Um, thank you so much. We're absolutely delighted to be here and really looking forward to sharing some of our, our thoughts around performance grades this afternoon. Thank you. Absolutely. Also to say, great to be here and what a privilege to be involved in, in this hour or so. And, and let's thank everybody here while we're at it for all the support, not just of ABRSM, but all the support you're all giving to learners, candidates, pupils, students, whatever we're calling them, in these current, you know, challenging and ever-changing times. So huge thank you for that before we say anything else. Wonderful, thank you. Well, I am just going to uh, share my screen. Um, today's webinar uh, is, of course, your questions answered about um, ABRSM performance grades. And um, we will be having um, a presentation, um, an overview from, uh, from Mervyn and from Ali. And then we are gonna be coming and we're gonna be directly answering some of the questions that you have asked. And I just wanna take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone, um, I guess we have, in some ways, it felt a little swamped. There has been lots, but that is fantastic. The fact that there has been so much interest uh, in these ABRSM performance grades. So um, just to let everyone know a little bit about uh, the Curious Piano Teachers, because you may be, this may be your first webinar that's been hosted by us. And, so should, um, we, should we just put out a poll, Sharon, to find out? That would be wonderful, Sally. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So Sally's just going to put out a poll. And the question is, is this your first webinar with the Curious Piano Teachers? So just let us know. We'll come back to, uh, to the results of that in, in a moment. So as Sally has said, you know, at the Curious Piano Teachers, um, we, uh, we all come together. Um, we're on a, an online membership site. And together we aim to learn as much as we teach. That for us as teachers is, is so important. Now, Members get access uh, to an extensive library of ready-to-use teaching resources and videos. We have been doing this for over five years now, so there are well over 50 topics because every single month we dive into, into a different topic. So from how to plan lessons effectively, uh, how to teach notation, technique, sight reading, memorization, improvisation. There's resources for teaching beginners to teaching adults. Um, resources for educating parents, resources for creating studio policies, for running a piano teaching business. Uh, more recently, of course, we have also um, created resources for how to teach online piano lessons effectively. Rhythm flashcards, ebooks, videos where you can observe other teachers teaching. So it's really practical, it's really specific, and where you can literally just lift teaching ideas and use them instantly in, in your own lessons. Now, this lovely smiling face uh, is of Hannah O'Toole, <laughs> our wonderful, caring, supportive community manager who looks after all our members and I've got to say does an incredible job of looking after them, sending out a weekly newsletter and interacting with members on our member exclusive uh, Facebook page, our Facebook group. And ultimately, and I think this is what's really special about um, the community of the Curious Piano Teachers is ultimately our members get to connect with one another. 
um, not only inside the Facebook group, but also via we have, and this is a new thing that we've started since um, we were locked down back in, in March time. We have uh, Zoom chats a couple of times um, each week. We also have member exclusive webinars and we also have courses that we run exclusively for members as well. Um, so if you are indeed curious, all you need to do is click on the join link. There is um, a coupon code there, free support. And if you type that in, you will be able to log in and get 100% access to everything. I mean, everything on the membership site uh, for one month completely free. After that, you can cancel. It's entirely your choice. Uh, you're not under any obligation. Um, or if you love it so much, you can stay on as a monthly member which is £26 per month or as a yearly member at £197 per year. So um, in a moment, I will just put that link into the comments. Um, but back over to you, Sally, for the results of that poll. Well, thank you very much, Sharon. 82% who are new to the Curious Planet Teachers. So fantastic. Thank you for coming along. Welcome, welcome. So as you'd know on today's uh, webinar, um, Mervyn and Ali will gi be giving us an overview of ABRSM's brand new performance rates and they'll be answering some of the questions that you've been sending our way. The question, the time for questions has now closed, of course, and we won't be answering any questions, any other questions here. But as Sharon said, you know, we'd like to say thank you to everybody who sent us questions. And uh, I know Mervyn and Ali are gonna do their very best to uh, give you the information that you all want to know. Um, but maybe it's not gonna be possible to, to answer absolutely every specific thing in 60 minutes, but I know they're gonna do their best. And um, I'm gonna talk about the context that just very briefly. And while I do that, Sharon's gonna send out another poll. And this time we'd like to know whether you're thinking of entering candidates for the new performance grades. And you'll see that there's there's a number of options. So do just click on the option that applies to you. And then Sharon can tell us the result of that in a little bit. So before we get started with that main presentation, I'm just going to take a few moments to put exams and what we're discussing today into context. Because um, over the past eight months, the world has changed. We all know this. And just about everybody has had to change their way of living. COVID-19 continues to have a big impact on our well-being and our mental states. And as in many other professions and areas of life, the changes in piano teaching and instrumental teaching have been profound and I think long-lasting. So back in the UK, in March, in a matter of weeks, all the instrumentals that could, and I think that was most of us actually, moved out of our teaching online. Now, back in January, before all this kicked off, if a Victorian piano teacher had peeked into a private piano lesson, I think she, because it was mostly females in those days, um, would have recognized many, many aspects of a typical lesson. Teacher-led instruction, master-apprentice model, and the focus around preparation for instrumental exams. Now, just eight months down the line, I think they would find it quite a different and maybe a foreign experience. Some of the same elements, of course, but with more pupil-led work, better use of questions from the teachers, maybe, and more direct and purposeful feedback. And these changes have happened because we've all been teaching online and the dynamics of lessons have felt very different. Sharon and I know this from personal experience. We are both have been teaching online and we continue to teach online at the moment. And the other difference, I think, of course, has been the, um, uh, the the less emphasis on exam preparation, because just like the rest of us, the exam boards have not been able to continue with their usual method of delivery, which up till that point had been majority face-to-face uh, -face exams. So I'd like to think about this for a moment, about this period from an exam board's point of view, and I'm talking about all the exam boards now as a collective. They've had to work from home away from the centralised and more streamlined operations. So there's been no more um, chats over copies and stuff like that. And we know that working from home, everything takes twice as long. And of course, the more people that are involved in the decision making, the longer it takes. And believe you me, the exam boards, all of them have had to make some really big and tough decisions really, really quite quickly. 
they've had to create entirely new formats for Make Sense. And I know that for ABS, ABRSM, this hasn't been entirely starting from scratch by any means. And I'll leave Ali um, to tell us more about that in a moment. But nevertheless, the workers have to go into the development of this new qualification, the performance grades. It's just immense. They've had to take the new qualification to Ofqual, and they've had it approved by them. And we know that in the UK, Ofqual have had a very busy summer indeed. And finally, of course, all the nuts and bolts of the delivery have had to be put in place. And that means hundreds and hundreds of hours of planning and hundreds and hundreds of hours of coding. Oh, glad I didn't have to do that bit, I have to say. Now, this applies to all the main exam boards. They've all had to change, adapt and create really rapidly um, to a situation that is continually evolving. You know, it's not fixed. Even now, we don't know what the future brings. And of course, everybody involved in this creation is only human. They too have been experiencing the same levels of anxiety and stress as everyone else has. Now, I don't tell you this to feel sorry for them, but indeed to place the enormous changes that they are making into perspective. So I'm just going to have a look at the uh, results of the poll. And I can see that actually a good 51% of you are um, thinking of entering candidates. So that's, that's fantastic. This term and 14 next term, 16% at some point in the future. Um, and, and I think another 16% thinking about it and just 2% are saying, saying no. So really, really interesting to have that. And at that point, I'm gonna hand over to Mervyn and Ali to tell us all about the performance grades. Over to you two. Thanks very much, Sally. Um, bear with me one second while I just uh, share the screen. And if you can let me know with a thumbs up, if you can see what I'm looking at, that'd be great. Yeah, that's okay, lovely. super. So um, as Sally said, my name is Ali Bowen Davis. I'm here today with my colleague Mervyn, who is Deputy Chief Examiner for ABRSM. And, and my role actually is, I think, one of the best ones um, because uh, I get to lead a fantastic team of people who are so creative and can come up with alternative ways of progressing a learner's musical educational journey. So that's really what um, performance grades are all about. So with further ado, I'll move on very quickly. Um, so ABRSM obviously is the world's leading provider of music exams and we're global. And our mission is to inspire achievement in music. And when we started thinking about this project, um, these are the sorts of answers that we were looking for. Why do learners do music exams? And they want to have a goal to practice towards. I did when I was young. They want to develop a broad range of skills, gain performance experience, uh, constructive feedback, and have those achievements recognised. I mean, I, I remember as a child, I was so thrilled to get my swimming badge for 50 metres. Uh, you know, they want to have that validation and the certification, and it's massively important. But what about those who want to develop skills in programming and the delivery of a sustained performance? They feel more comfortable and confident, perhaps, performing via video submission, because we all struggle with nerves. Also, I think um, this is one of the most accessible programmes that the ABRSM has designed, because it makes those who have special needs or access requirements um, easier than perhaps the traditional practi practical grade, which some might find difficult to engage with. And that's because it's often examiner led. And there are others, obviously, we've tried to make this as flexible as we possibly can. So for those who need a different date or time because of an accompaniment or a location. So those were the key kind of ingredients that we were looking at when we, when we were working on the development plan. So um, the aims and the objectives um, for performance take to the stage, showcase, interpret, communicate, and engage with your audience, um, share the craft. And what we wanted to do was provide an opportunity to bring all of those essential skills 
into a regulated qualification. So it was showcasing and rewarding. The music itself, um, there's a far greater musical choice um, between the pieces, choosing how to arrange them into a program, choosing how best to put across musical interests, tastes, strengths and personality. And there is a wealth of rich and, and exciting music to draw on, uh, both in ABRSM syllabuses and beyond that. But really it's about personalizing uh, a learner's program and sharing their own musical story. And lastly, um, accessibility, making it flexible. It's remotely assessed. Performances can take place in a home setting, at school, or within a community environment. So it's perfect for all ages. There's the freedom to choose where to record your performance and with whom, giving far greater flexibility. So why now? Um, one of the misconceptions about performance grades is that it was ABRSM's response to a COVID pandemic. Um, this this programme and project has actually been in transit for about a year. And, and what ABRSM wanted to do was diversify its portfolio. And we wanted to give greater choice to learners and to teachers, actually. So we're building on uh, the success of the practical grades and also of the ARSM, which is our associate of the Royal Schools of Music programme. It's always been part of our long-term plan to widen that range of qualifications and to provide learners with a far greater choice in terms of what they present for their assessment and how that assessment takes place. Um, we're also um, future-proofing. Um, the pandemic has prompted us to speed up our plans to offer an additional set of graded exams that focuses on performance. We've also ensured that they can be assessed remotely through the submission of the recording. And what's, what Sally just touched on was absolutely spot on. This pandemic has absolutely demonstrated people's ability to adapt to a digital environment. We wanted to put measures in place that prevented people from progressing. You know, we were, we were sadly in a position where we had to stop our face-to-face -face exams back in March, but we don't want people to stop moving on and learning and engaging. So these aren't a temporary measure to replace our existing practical grades. They're an additional way to provide a motivation and inspire learners um, that gives credit for their performance skills. So the qualification specification, which, which is available online, um, this suite, the performance grades, applies to all of our instruments and also to singing. Uh, basically, when um, you're ready, you record a video of uh, the learner's performance and send it through to ABRSM and that will be marked by an examiner panel. It's available for grades one through eight. And basically the selection of four pieces are intended to be provided as a continuous program. So three of those pieces are chosen from the lists that exist already in that instrument syllabus, plus one completely free choice. As I said before, it's assessed remotely, which makes it so much more accessible. And, and also a really nice feature of performance grades is that they're interchangeable with the practical grades. So you might want to um, invest in and build on those technical supporting tests at a young grade one or two. And then perhaps you might step across to grade three so you can start to develop those performance skills with your learners and then move back again maybe to grades four or five. So the point is, is that you can use them in an interchangeable fashion, which makes them um, a real pathway, which has parity between our existing um, practical grades. They have absolute equity with our practical grade suites. And also Sally mentioned earlier on, we did have to submit to UCAS and we had to submit to Ofqual. And we were so thrilled that the UCAS point weighting, uh, which is equivalent to what we have for our practical grades, has been applied to these qualifications. Um, 
with this year and the general education space being turned upside down, never before have um, practical and graded music exams, the currency of those with a UCAS tariff has never been so critical because obviously, you know, what happened this year with, with, with the A-levels. So um, these are based, the, 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 the points that we've been awarded are based on the same repertoire and the same syllabuses and this same assessment criteria. So um, you can have absolute confidence that the quality of these new performance grades is absolutely have parity with our practical grades and they are assessed by the same highly qualified and trained examiners. At ABRSM we do believe that a thorough understanding of the elements of music is essential for a full and satisfying performance at the higher grades. Therefore, the prerequisite of grade five or above in music theory, practical musicianship, or any practical music solo jazz instrument stands before learners can progress to grades six, seven or eight. So at this point, I'd like to hand over to Mervyn, who is going to talk us through the marking aspects of the performance grades. Mervyn. Thanks, Ali. Uh, unlike Ali, I didn't get a badge for swimming, but I did for other sports and it did help me practice and practice and practice to get the next one. I do definitely have the, the best job, though, because as an examiner, I'm fortunate enough to hear all the performances we're talking about. So we'll, we'll have an argument about that after. <laughs> so it's got the best job. <laughs> Anyway, to the marking of the performance grades. As it says on the slide, as with the practical grades, they'll be out of a total of 150 marks and the four pieces of, or songs will be marked individually with a maximum of 30 marks for each item. That's exactly the same as the three are in practical grades through our established criteria, which you, most of you all know about, pitch, time, tone, shape and performance. And we often shorten that to PTTSP. So quick bit of maths, four times 30, that's 120 of the, of the 150 marks. And of course, performance is part of that anyway. So that's no different to what it was before, except there's the extra piece. And then after that, we'll apply a, a separate set of criteria for the remaining 30 marks for the performance as a whole. And, and as it says on the slide there, it's a wide angled view, if you like. And I'll just explain that. So we're looking at the performance as a whole from essentially a different angle than the individual pieces. We're evaluating the totality of the performance and as examiners will be writing things that we can't really say for absolute uh, certainty until the performance is finished. And talking about the wide angle, you might also think about it as if you go on Google Maps but go to a greater height and there are, there are other apps uh, available, I, I should say, but go to a greater height and you can see the whole picture, but we've already dealt with the details, so we won't be looking at the detail in that performance as a whole lens. And there are three perspectives in our criteria for the performance as a whole, communication, interpretation, and delivery. And in fact, they make up performance. And we feel that the best way to think about this and also to share with with uh, pupils and candidates is to think of communication as you, that's the candidate, you and your listener or audience, interpretation, you and your music, and delivery, in effect, you and your instruments. And I'll just briefly explain what our criteria lenses are actually going to talk about. So to take communication, you and the listener, we're across the playing and singing as a whole, we all know as, as, as musicians that a sense of communication is essential to a good performance. But so what is that in effect? How can we measure that? Well, it's to do with projection, a sense of musical involvement that's coming across, a feeling of personal commitment and conviction. And, and that does come across. And we're looking at it across the whole program. At the end, how did that come across? How consistently did it, did it actually come across through all four pieces? And of course, part of that communication in terms of detail is, is about things like sequencing and the pacing of the program. Did we frame that piece? Did we let the, the quiet piece at the end die away before we jumped into the next one? And it's about performance awareness and control that brings across to the listener a sense of communication. I could be playing really, really, really well, but if my head is 
in the music or in just hiding behind the music stand, I won't project as well. And of course, there won't be that sense of communication. So that's how we're going to think of communication. And then interpretation, you and your music. You might want to think of this in similar to characters in a play. We're going to bring as candidates four pieces. They've all got a character. Did those characters come through? Were they differentiated? For instance, if the first two were, I don't know, a piece of bark and then uh, one of those illustrative pieces like the lazy bear, although there's no one way to play either of those pieces, they're going to be differentiated in a good performance. So it's about that interpretation, whether it's grade one or grade eight or anything in between. And in terms of the detail, how does that work? How, how does it happen? Well, it's to do with control of texture and balancing an ensemble across the program again were tunes clear against accompaniments or if there was imitation were all the parts even and if you take a high grade example maybe a, a string one something like a franc piece at which at which points the violin will be leading on which points it'll be more ensemble playing well those differentiated as well appropriately so you and your music did you give it character or was that consistently effective across the program and then the third one uh, the delivery which perhaps is the most obvious one in a way but you and the instrument within the boundaries of the pieces that you brought the grade you're on did you meet the technical challenges that you brought for instance in that fourth piece that you chose to enhance what you wanted to achieve in your playing did that come across as well as the other pieces was the playing as good at the end as it was at the beginning a sense of stamina and that's partly about the management of the instrument in the wind, brass and singing exams there's a chance to have a break. How is that managed? Is the playing just as good after the break as it was before? Those sorts of things will be involved in our delivery with our wide angled lens in addition to having thought of individual pieces just on their own beforehand. So in effect we're weighing up the strengths and weaknesses as we always do through the musical outcome. Very important to say that because we're not assessing a program choice, we're assessing how it played out in the exam, whether it's the pacing of it, the control of it, the differentiation of the pieces within it. And we're doing that in this 30 marks through these angles of communication, interpretation and delivery. And just a thought, what sort of words the examiner might be writing in that part of the mark form words like throughout, consistently, for most of the performance or overall, which is not something we would say in the same way in a practical grade where we're assessing each section by section as a series of tasks and responses to, to the exam, which is I think a good time to hand back to Ali just to mention some of these complementary things and distinctive natures of the two exams when put close together. Thanks Mervyn. Um, so which route do you, do you want to encourage your learners to go down? Um, either actually and both. As I said a minute ago, these are interchangeable. Um, so you could encourage uh, a candidate to look at grades one, two or three, move across at four to do practical grades or the other way around actually, develop those performance skills because that's what they really love to do. They love band on a Wednesday night or they love going and doing their piano stuff on a Saturday morning. Um, and maybe then they can move across to do the practical grade. So the difference is really, and I like this because it's, it's kind of like a switching guide which gives you some information which will help you make an informed choice in consultation with, with your students. So the practical grades are obviously they are live and they're examiner led. So the examiner is is taking the lead on what part of the test comes next. So um, would you like to start with your first piece? Thank you very much. Would you like now to play me these scales? So it's a situation that's very much led by ABRSM. That helps to promote the all round practical musicianship skills, which we absolutely believe in as an organization and we still do through these exciting new performance grades but it's a follow the recipe you can't go wrong it's versatile it's very interactive and the skills are assessed separately through the different components of the exam and the total mark 
does not define, I mean, that, that gives the total mark of the entire assessment. So performance grades, they're remotely assessed and therefore they have personal ownership and they lead uh, their exam. They're in control of what pieces they play. And actually for those candidates who are neurodiverse or have some access requirements, that can really help release some of the anxiety they might feel about going into a practical grade exam. We focus very much obviously on the musical performance as Mervyn has just gone through. Um, but this, as opposed to following the recipe, is more like designing a menu. And I remember at college when I was studying, um, you know, there were some terrific technical pianists who were fantastic and could read absolutely everything that you threw at them. Um, but they didn't, they would not had that opportunity to really develop their performance skills. And that was one of the key ingredients we looked at when we were developing this, this portfolio. I guess it's about the demonstration of commitment to the music. Um, it's about stamina. And as Mervyn said, it's about how they communicate. But all of those skills, including those um, supporting technical aspects of instrumental playing, they're assessed holistic holistically and applied throughout the whole performance. So I guess um, the good foundation for all round uh, instrumental and practical musicianship is solid preparation for a wide range of musical activities. And, and I think for me as a teacher, I would encourage my students to do both of our practical grades and also our performance grades at different times in their learner journey. Um, I was lucky enough to go to music college. Had performance grades been around when I was that age, I could present to my HE uh, environment my practical grade eight, which signifies those um, those technical skills on which they're going to build high levels of learning for me. But it would also demonstrate through the performance grades, because I'm able to do my second study instrument as one of my pieces and my free choice piece, which is piece four, can also be on my second study instrument. I can therefore give some real enhancement to my application. And that's one of one of the really strong selling key points of, of our performance grades. Um, so I think that actually concludes our presentation. Um, I hope you found that insightful and engaging. And uh, at this point, I think I'd like to hand back to Sharon and Sally. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Mervyn and Ali. Really deeply informative and um, I do indeed love what you're saying about the, about the diversity. It's, it's offering up um, more opportunities um, for our students. Um, I've, I've even underlined and written down there that ownership that these um, performance grades is giving. I mean, that's so, so vital. Um, I put up on our, our Facebook group just yesterday um, my three-year-old started nursery um, very recently, came home yesterday with a, a little biscuit that he had iced and it was so exciting. You know, it was all a bit wonky, but it was, it was his. And sometimes as I think just generally speaking as piano teachers, we miss out how vital it is that our students have a say, that it's not us or the exam boards that are just constantly making all these decisions for them because it really, um, I think it really motivates them when they have that say. Sally? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited uh, about this. I mean, you know, as, as an, an ABRSM examiner, I, I know how the ARSM has worked with, with that performance element. And I think to bring this over into the other um, uh, now performance uh, grades is, is just really, really exciting, I think. And it does give that diversity. And certainly I've got a couple of uh, students who are going to do it this term. You know, they were going to, they were just starting to prepare to ready to do something in the summer. That hasn't happened. Um, so they're loving this fact that they get to do four pieces. So the pieces that they've been learning over the summer, you know, they, they can choose to, to play one of those as well. 
and um, I think it's going to be so important for them to learn more about their performance. You know, they've, they're used to kind of doing little informal performances to each other and we'll be having some performance workshops to kind of get them to recognise what makes a good performance because 10 and 11 year olds on the whole don't really recognise, which is the age that my two are, don't really recognise what's the difference between a good performance and a bad performance. So I'm really excited about kind of digging, digging into it and, and getting them to recognise the difference between, between those two. Um, and I think the other thing for teachers is it, it gives this broader suite um, that, that we can use. I always call it sounds the cherry on the cake. It's not the cake itself. And I think that's really, really worth emphasizing that the exams just are the air, a part of the suite of performances that we should be offering our, our students, you know, as, as teachers, certainly in the Curious Piano Teachers, you know, we, we have our own piano framework. We have a, a, a wide curriculum that we teach. And occasionally my students do an exam, but it's not the reason we, we, uh, I teach them the piano. I teach them so that they, and that's why we're all here, isn't it? Because we love music and we want to pass on that love of music. That's really the, the, the driving factor behind everything, really. Super. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Mervyn. Wonderful. OK, so I think we have now reached the point I am going to bring up on screen um, your questions that you have been asking. And I am going to go over, Ali, I think this is, is your question. Um, so can you explain the overlap period for performance grades? So is it the same as, as practical grades? And does the free choice piece need to be from the same syllabus or can it be from any year? Thanks, Sharon. Um, yep, the, uh, the overlap period for the performance grades is exactly the same as the practical grades. Um, so candidates can choose repertoire from the preceding lists and the actual length of the overlap period is given on our website. So the second question, does the free choice piece need to be from the same syllabus um, or can it be from any year? It can be from any year and even better than that, it doesn't actually have to be from an ABRSM syllabus at all. Um, and that's the beauty of this qualification in the sense that we really have tried to give as much flexibility and choice as possible to teachers and learners. So as teachers, you might have a piece of music that is absolutely glorious that isn't on one of our lists, utilize that. And I think um, just what I'd like to say here, and Mervyn can, can jump in if he wishes to, uh, please don't be anxious as to whether, oh, is that piece the right, the right standard? I mean, obviously if it's a grade eight student and, and they play something at grade three, we might have some, some feedback to give you on that. Um, but, but we're more interested in is how that fits in with the program itself over a sustained period of time. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And please don't angst over whether a piece is grade 2.1 or 1.9. You know, mm -hmm. we're, examiners are not going to be policemen, police ladies over, over that sort of thing. <laughs> Great. OK, so moving on to the next question. Um, Mervyn, this is maybe one you can pick up. So is the expectation that the performance will be of a higher standard? OK, so in other words, no or very few slip ups than the normal face to face practical exam given that they can potentially be re-recorded? Or will they be treated in a similar way? You know, the odd mistake along the way, but hopefully with quick recovery in the spirit that any performance may have unexpected hiccups. Thanks, I think it's a really great question, actually. Uh, taking one word that comes out of it, spirit, the spirit of the whole thing is very similar. Absolutely the same. Uh, and that's, that's we want people to make music. Um, to take the two together, the first thing, as you probably expect with my examiner hat on, will be to go back to the criteria. The marking of the individual pieces, the four pieces or songs, through pitch, time, tone, shape, performance, is the same as it would be in practical grades, except there's one more piece. We are not applying those criteria in any different way to what everybody's used to. And then, of course, we're applying that extra set of criteria for, in effect, what happened in the totality of it. So I just got three very quick reflections on um, it's not a binary yes or no answer to this one as you might imagine we can all think of really good performances where there were in the individual pieces little blips from time to time 
uh, they will still be marked as they would have done, but they might not have affected the whole performance at all. I went to a Bartok piano concerto uh, once where the performer nearly got on a bit of a, um, a sort of loop with the fugue, but got out of it so quickly that if you didn't know the piece, you wouldn't have noticed. That piece would have been, as it were, marked down a bit, but it didn't affect the performance as a whole. Mm. Whereas mm. you might hear a performance where every time, let's say it's me as a singer, got to an E, it didn't sound as good. And that happened through all the pieces. And after the third piece, it started to jar a bit. And that did affect the, the whole performance. So that's my first reflection. The second is the, the two different angles of the, the, the exams, the practical grades against performance grades. In the practical grade, here's the candidate. Can I start again? And the examiner, of course, of course you can. Where would you like to go from? Would you like to go from um, the, after the double bar? Well, of course, sometimes, and even in the recorded situation, somebody's going to make a mistake and have to restart. But of course, in a performance grade, that's the ownership of, of the learner, the candidate or whatever. And there's no examiner to say that. And of course, as the candidate, if I say, oh, heck, I've gone wrong, that does affect the performance as a whole. So it's just slightly different. It's, it's not quite a parallel. And my last little reflection is when you record something a few times over, doesn't necessarily get better. It might get different. We've, lots of us in this call will have done recordings. Take one, um, and of course, if the whole continuous tape had certain things about it, take two might have been better in actual notes, but had it got the same electricity as take one? So that's another set of things. As Sally was talking about learning about performance, learning about recorded mm -hmm. performance is also something that's going to come out of it. So I'm not dodging the question um, at one level, but I think. Uh, the first criteria, definitely the, exactly the same way, but in terms of the performance of the whole, there are other things at play, which um, mean, of course, there are going to be some mistakes along the way. It's quite possible if we try and out, iron out every single note error that we would ever make, we're going to lose something else. Yeah, it lands up being quite wooden. And I, I, I love just what you're saying there about directing uh, teachers back to the criteria. I think that's a really, really valuable point. Mm -hmm. um, here's another question. Will the examiners listening to the video submission be listening through a decent system or headphones at least? The quality of recording can vary enormously through various players and this teacher is saying having invested in some decent microphone and audio equipment, I'd like to be reassured that the recording video is going to be listened to on a high quality medium. I can certainly reassure we will be doing that. We're not going to be, you know, having the highest, 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 highest ever fidelity each, but we will all, certainly all have a decent system uh, and we, we will be likely using headphones unless we've got a particularly good padded cell simply because we don't want to be distracted from our job apart from anything else. So I can certainly give reassurance there. And another set of reassurance really, that examiners are used to listening to different acoustics, to different sounds uh, in the face-to-face -face environment. It could be a very small room. It could be a, a, a re relatively massive hall with a big acoustic. So there'll be different sets of recording uh, coming through as well. And examiners are used to marking from uh, those sorts of different acoustics and so forth. So yes, very, very much can reassure uh, we won't be disadvantaging anybody by the way technically we listen. Thank you. Ali, this um, I think is one for you. So what is this step-by-step -step procedure for how to upload the recording? Um, so is it about touching a file, sending an ABRS, ABRS and an email? something on the website. Um, this person is obviously a little bit concerned, not very computer savvy. What response can you give to this? Well, my, my immediate response is um, clearly about how I started this webinar by uh, not unmuting my mute button. That tells you that I too am not entirely tech savvy. And I'm sure Mervyn wouldn't mind if I said, um, he and I have managed to do this, so I think the world is safe in terms of being able to upload one of our performance uh, grade videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, it's basically done through the booking system that you will have utilised to actually book um, the, the exam in the first place. And you do upload, you don't send us an email, 
um, because obviously the there's going to be quite a variable in um, the mega size or megabyte size. See, technical me not the megabyte size of the videos that you are going to be submitting. There's going to be a huge variant in those. Um, we have given documentary advice, which is available on our website, and it's through the performance grades guideline document. But even better than that today, we have literally just launched a whole series of instructional videos on our YouTube channel, which gives you a step by step visual guide. Um, and there's a really brilliant one, one of our examiners did, which is basically the whole experience, how to set up the recording, what you need to show to camera, what the, what the candidate needs to say, and then finally at the very end, how to physically go in and upload with screenshots of our booking system. So um, like I said, if I can do it, you're in safe hands. <laughs> That's fantastic. And it's great to hear too that there are those YouTube videos because I know sometimes just to get a holistic idea of exactly what it's going to look like right from the get go is really useful. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, the next question, will performance grades be our only option this autumn or are you hoping that face to face exams will resume? Well, obviously, you know, um, ABRSM is really hoping that we can get back to business, um, but we are following very closely government guidance. And while COVID is still a significant risk, um, our priority is keeping the wider ABRSM family safe. And that involves our learners, our teachers, our HLRs, our representatives, everybody who was involved in a face to face exam process. So I think for me, um, until we have some clarity and we just don't know where COVID is going to go, we don't have a crystal ball. Um, I would thoroughly suggest that you do look very closely at, at performance grades. Um, they're an alternative to the practical grades. <clears throat> some of our private centres were really keen to support us in offering an opportunity for face to face exams. But to be honest, with the recent surge, um, that, that's probably going to be decline uh, in nature because people are so concerned about um, individuals coming in who aren't in their bubble. So I think sensibly, uh, please do utilise the performance grades uh, for this autumn term. And obviously ABRSM will keep you informed as to its progress with regards to getting face to face practical grades back up and running. It sounds like a plan because obviously, like you're saying, Ali, there is no certainty regarding how the situation is, um, is going to run out. But there is certainty about the performance grades and being able to use that as an option. Next question. If a candidate is based overseas but is still taught by a teacher in the UK, can the exam be booked and uploaded as a UK booking? Um, well, for the UK session, the applicant should be UK based and have a UK postal address. Um, there are those instances where you may have a candidate who's based overseas, though, and they could have access to our system in which to upload a video. Um, we will, though, be gradually rolling out our performance grades internationally, um, starting before the end of 2020, following their initial launch in the UK. Um, so that's when obviously they would be globally available um, to our overseas students. But for the UK, they do need to be UK based and they do need to have a UK postal address. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, Merv. Um, Merv, and one for you. Once the exam has been booked, can you submit your recording immediately? Or do you have to wait until the exam period officially starts on the 17th of October? The sort of quick answer to that, and I'll explain once I've said it, is yes and no. <laughs> um, so once the exam has been booked, you can submit your recording. Uh, maybe immediately, just like when you pay anything online and you don't quite get your um, your confirmation from Travel Lodge, or that that tells you a little bit about about my life. Uh, <laughs> immediately, you'd give it give it some a few minutes, but basically yes. Uh, you don't have to wait until the exam period officially starts. So the booking period is separate to the exam period. And of course, it's, it's quite difficult because 
there are exam days, you will get an exam day and a time by which you needed to upload it. That's what our exam day is in remote world, but you can uh, uh, upload it, submit it well before then, as long as you don't wait till the last possible second on that day, and then you could have problems if it doesn't go straight away. Okay, great. Um, Ali, for the video recording, does it have to be continuous throughout the pieces as a complete performance, or this person's wanted to know are they able to do four separate videos of each performance? Echoing Mervyn's response. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> Um, it, it does one of the one of the key ingredients of of the performance uh, grades is um, it's about the learner um, showing or showcasing their performance abilities across a sustained performance of a piece of music, and we don't want that interrupted. We want to see how they cope in its totality. Um, with regards to doing the four separate videos things happen, things go wrong. And if it goes wrong, really wrong, stop, go back, start again. But please don't give us four individual videos. Um, and the also, the, the other thing that I wanted to mention, I don't think Mervyn and I have raised it yet, is the use of uh, editing software. Please don't. Uh, even if you're in a room that's got a dead acoustic, please don't do anything that upsets that actual acoustic or the reverb of the recording. Um, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Okay, great. And I think, yeah, just for nearly there, does the timing start from the very beginning of the recording when the program is announced, or does it start from the first note of the first piece? And then is it okay if the free choice piece is longer than the duration mentioned in the guidelines? Thanks, Sharon. I'll take these separately, actually, because there's a slightly different nuance to them. I'll answer the first one by saying the preparatory things, that's the showing of the programme form to the camera, uh, the announcing of the programme, if it's grade six to eight, showing of candidate ID, and any prior tuning, they are not included in the timings. They're not included in the assessment. So in that sense, the assessment and the timing starts maybe just a, a few seconds before that first note of the first piece, because obviously, again, you want to frame it, you don't just go flying into it, but basically from the first note of the first piece all the way until the end, because the performance as a whole assessment does include the pacing, the sequencing, how you use the break if you're allowed on those sorts of things. So in essence, the answer is it starts from the first note of the first piece. In terms of the free choice piece, the only regulations for that in terms of regulation, or its minimum length, and that's on the website and the guidelines that Ali mentioned as well, and that it's appropriate level for the grade, and we've covered that already. Bear in mind though, there are also regulations for the maximum time for the whole programme. That's from that first note till the very end. So those are the things to, to uh, take into account then. If the free choice is longer than the duration mentioned in the guidelines, that's a guideline. And just bear in mind, obviously, if the free choice piece is a lot longer than the other three in terms of the performance as a whole, that's that's going to have some weight uh, and it'll just be how it's paced sensibly. And I think it's quite good. I think that's the last question. It's good to finish on the free, free choice piece in a way, because that's one of the defining uh, things about this exam, uh, which we are really deliberately trying to make as complementary. That's complementary uh, and also distinctive from the practical grades. So I think it's a, it's a good place to land here. And we will, as, as Ali said, still have a session three face to face. That has difficulties. It's a safe environment from in terms of the exam, but not a safe environment possibly in terms of the world. Uh, uh, whereas performance grade is a new environment, uh, a risky one, an exciting one perhaps uh, in terms of the assessment and the exam, but it's a safe bet in terms of upload recording. Really mm. insightful. Thank you. Really, really so helpful, much. I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I know Sally and I have, have talked about how, you know, obviously, so, you know, many, many, many students, nearly every student has some sort of recording device. And I know we've certainly been finding that uh, with online lessons, 
students, you know, asking them to send you videos. And it's fascinating how they will not just send you the first thing, they will work at it. And I know we've been finding it really incredibly interesting how they are becoming a lot more skilled at self-assessment, which is, of course, such, something that's incredibly important uh, for, for all instrumentalists. And I, I'm just, I, I am loving the, this new learning curve um, mm. that, that we have because students are yeah. going to, I think, learn an awful lot. Yeah, I, I think also for students and for teachers, it's going to be really important the way they prepare for this mm. and you know, to get a run up going. You know, it's not just turn up on the, on the day and you know, record your pieces prepare for it in advance. I'm, I'm certainly thinking about how I'm going to do that and, you know, have two or three uh, recordings beforehand. And actually, I always share the criteria with my students because to get them to be the examiner for themselves or for each other is a really, really powerful thing. And you'd be surprised. OK, you might have to put it, put it into primary school speak sometimes, but they usually get it and they can hear when you start to talk about the, the tone or the rhythm or, you know, the, the communication. So I would, I would really recommend doing that because it's certainly something I'm going to be working at. But I think everybody's going to learn a lot through this whole experience. And um, Mervyn and Ali, you have just sort of given us this really, really detailed but, but uh, overview of these performance grades. And, and I'm sure everybody who's listening will will really go away with a much better sense of, of how exciting they are as a development, I think, and how they're going to complement the, um, the, the, the graded exams, that uh, the face-to-face -face exams that, that exist. Um, really, really helpful. And again, as an examiner, I'm looking forward to both entering students and also being on the other side and, and, and doing the, uh, the whole assessment process of it all. But very, very insightful indeed. Thank you both. You're welcome. Pleasure. So I just want to say that um, we are just about there. Um, we've timed this really well, actually. <laughs> well done to everyone. <laughs> just two minutes to go. So I just want to say that uh, if you are listening to the, um, as you will be, to this, this live webinar, we will be emailing everyone uh, so everyone who has registered for this live webinar, uh, we will be sending out an email with the, the YouTube replay. Um, so you can either watch it again or and feel free to share it. Uh, I also do recommend, and Ali, maybe you'll actually give us the web. I, I was aware um, that, of course, we don't have the chat, so that is why I couldn't have put a link in earlier. But Ali, what was the link again if for people wanting to just hop on and, and go directly and find out a little bit more information? Um, okay, so let me get you the URL here. Um, if you want to look at um, our performance grades, it's on our website, which is www.abrsm.org. And we have a dedicated uh, performance grade page, which is accessible on our front screen. And from mm -hmm. there, you can then skivvy off around the website to the various different guidelines we've got, our videos, which are, as I said, just been launched on our YouTube channel. So please do look at those. They're fantastic. Yeah. Really Wonderful. Useful. Looking forward to going over and having a look at those. Um, and also just a reminder that uh, if you have enjoyed this, this webinar, um, and, uh, and we know that so many of you are obviously new to the Curious Piano Teachers, do make use of that coupon code that we have given you today to come and join us as a member of the Curious Piano Teachers. Uh, the website again for that is uh, thecuriouspianoteachers.org forward slash join. And if you use the coupon code uh, free support, um, that will enable you to get a month completely free and get access to resources um, and lots of uh, piano teaching friends as well. So with that, I just want to say a final thank you to everyone who has joined us on the live call. Um, 
being on the live call is always so much more exciting uh, than, than watching the, the replay video by yourself afterwards. Um, so thank you so much for uh, spending your time here with us for the past hour. And also a massive thank you to, um, to Mervyn and to Ali. We really appreciate you pulling this all together. Um, I want to say a big thank you um, to Claire, I think it's Callum over at ABRSN who have um, been pulling together all of these questions that you guys have been sending. That's a big, big job in itself. So I want to say a big thank you um, to them as well. And um, Sally and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. So bye for now. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye.